Hello and what is up guys, right here and welcome back to some more automation and BeamNG Drive. As you can tell, we are going to be creating a Ford F-350-ish, so it's going to be a heavy duty pickup truck from the 1980s. It's going to be basically you know, similar to a Ford F-350 and whatever uh, Chevrolet and Dodge would have had at the time as well. So a massive, massive full size pickup truck basically, um, not your typical you know, half ton like an F-150 or a Chevrolet 1500 or Dodge Ram, etc. Or I guess just a Ram 1500. Um, this is going to be a bigger, bigger, bigger truck with a massive engine, tons of power. Uh, has to be very reliable. Looks, of course, we're going to try to base it on the 1980s-ish for looks. Uh, I want to have my own style to it. I'm not going to copy Ford or Chevy, but I might take a mix from all the elements. So let's start off with the car. The body that we're choosing is going to be the biggest truck body they have in this game because the F-350 is... By all means, a, a, a gosh darn large truck. It's a big truck. Uh, steel, ladder obviously, steel, uh, longitudinal. We're gonna go for like saw axle front and rear. That just it sounds pretty utilitarian for both. Uh, it's it might not be a hundred percent real realistic, guys. I'm not going for a hundred percent realism. I'm going for semi realism with my own take on things. Um, so we're gonna do probably just solid leafs front and rear, heavy duty coils or you know. Could be good for some things too, but leaves are just a bit more heavy duty. I I think just you know it's literally just that's the suspension right there. That's the entire suspension setup for the car. Just just leaves. It's literally it just just leaves. Uh yeah, that's it's not great. Then you of course just the struts, but that's fine. Uh, it's gonna be a sixty degree V eight engine, all cast iron because you know push rod obviously. Pfft. If I could make this thing a two stroke, I would. I'm just, I'm just kidding, guys. Stop it's gonna be a, just massive stroke because we want torque. Uh, and this is gonna give us more torque and a big bore i'm thinking like i think about 7.3 liters is around 400 and whatever cubic inches uh let me just get an estimate here what i can do around because the uh, engines for the f the f-350 the biggest engine possible which is what we're trying to go for here a four barrel 460 cubic inch v8 which is a, a, around seven point i'm gonna guess 7.4 7.5 liters i'm guessing we're gonna go 7.5 a seven and a half liter v8 Oh, yes, it's, it's seven and a half liters. Okay, yeah, I guessed right. Uh, seven and a half liter V8, 7.495, sure. Uh, push rod V8, all cast iron. All cast, because, you know, four. I can go forged, maybe. Maybe. Me, it would be realistic, but maybe. Uh, compression will start off at a solid nine to one. Uh, maybe even eight and a half to one, and just like a low cam profile, because this is going to be, you know, we need just low end power here. No turbos, because that'd be just obscene. Um, carburetor. I mean, I can do it. I could do injection. I could do injection. We're gonna do carburetor, four barrel. It it would have had a single carb. I'm sure we had a single a single carb standard, obviously, and then regular fuel. If you know, kind of let it probably. I don't know. Uh, let's just put this to zero for now. We're gonna have just what? We can have either cast log or short cast. We're gonna do cast log, just something else. Dual exhaust, because you know it's it's better flow. Maybe I don't know. This is cheaper. We'll see. Uh, it's gonna have a cat. It's gonna have a cat. This is 1980, so this is this is kind of the Malay, Malay, Malay. I don't know. This is like kind of the, the shitty era of cars, where cars not great for full run. Um, but just reverse flow, reverse flow. This seems to be pretty quiet too. Just 18.9 or 18.8 loudness. But then again, the engine doesn't run at all. Um, wow, it doesn't like nothing's nothing's happening here. We'll this down to 40, 4,000 RPM sounds like a fine limit. 130 pound fit torque. Perfect engine, absolute masterpiece. Let's lower this down just to eight to one compression ratio. It is already a, literally a turret engine. Actually, we're making it just a boat ton of power. Oh my gosh! Uh, th for three hundred pound feet of torque with one hundred thirty horse. So if we're basing it off of the uh, Ford four hundred sixty cubic inch seven point five liter V eight engine that was available in the F three fifty at the time, uh, starting nineteen eighty three. So this is eighty two. Whatever. I don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. It had two hundred forty five horse and three hundred eighty torque. Yes, it's an American engine. It doesn't it doesn't have to be uh, powerful. We can probably do short cast. Get a bit more horsepower to that. That's still that's still in the realm of possibility. Here we can increase the horse the uh, the rims just a bit here, even though that doesn't really help us at all. Cam profile can go up to maybe just a thirty. I know we're making less torque. Don't remind. We can go twin carb or injection. Like injection would have been a little less realistic. A little less realistic, to be honest. I, I'm not. You know, I, I know someone requests this, and I do like making cars for people, but I don't like making clones. You know, we are getting a lot of power just from actually just doing dual exhaust. We go back to carburetor. Okay, maybe just an eight, just just an eight pack of carbs, like you know, two four barrels, two two four barrel carburetors, eight barrels of carburetors, eight pack. That's what they, that's what they, that's what they guess they would have called it. 
Uh, this sounds actually pretty fun. We can use carburetors. That seems okay. Increased ignition timing. Pretty simple engine, honestly. Like, there's not much to do for it. Reliability is an astonishing just 49, which that's awful. Uh, we're not increasing any sliders, though, so any, everything is not really reliable. 380 torque and 200. Uh, this is this is pretty much the exact same as the 7.5 liter V8. We're not making a clone, though, guys. We're not making a clone. We're not making a clone. Uh, we can probably get bigger exhaust here. I don't really care about loudness that much. But I don't want to keep it not, not just obscenely loud, right? Obviously. Um, torque, literally 290 pound feet of torque is available through the entire rev range of the entire car, which is a fair bit to say the least. Um, we're actually getting more torque here, but it's not peak. It's reason. I just want to get this all the solid numbers. Just give me all like nice numbers and I'll be happy. We can do pretty horsepower, pretty, pretty powerful engine. Hope the engine is not like, wait, wait, we're just losing power here. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Leaning the engine now we're getting even more power here. Oh, no, we're just starting to get down here. I'll increase the exhaust. I'm okay with going with the sliders up just a bit because that's, that's still pretty realistic if we increase the sliders. I just want to get this even numbers. Oh, wow. I mean, it's still 280 torque is available, you know, pretty low. This is probably good. 335 horse, which is more than, than I think any of the F series pickup trucks at the time, by a good amount. And, uh, more torque by 40 pound feet of torque so this is like what 60 more horsepower or 70 more horsepower and 100 more torque that sounds pretty fine to me so we are doing the body now um holy crap is this thing massive this thing is uh, i'm gonna build it kind of for off-roading kind of wow i think you change that it's kind of cool. i'm gonna build it kind of for off-roading kind of for not off-roading um this is a work truck but obviously i want to do some cool off-road tests and stuff this is gonna be like a a built truck to say the least and we can actually move this up and down that's cool like oh I like these body lines you can have now. That's kind of, I don't like that at all. This just looks more better. Okay, enough about the body. We're gonna keep going here. I'm gonna make this just a mass of this, the widest rear. We can, not really that wide, actually. Very right, uh, this thing's just, this is just a literal box on wheels. Okay, uh, four by four, manual, four speed sounds fine. 140, 150, 160 kilometers sounds fine. And that's over 100 miles an hour around there. Manual lock and diff, uh, radial, Chunky off-road. This is a work truck, but I want to have off-road tires because I might take this thing just a bit off-roading. And what, 18-inch wheels and just massive tires because this thing's gotta be it's gonna be a little bit fun, right? Maybe it's a truck that someone bought and they they rebuilt over the time. 18-inch wheels. Is... Sure. Um, before you guys yell at me because this is not realistic, the tire size or the wheel size. I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's uh, you gotta understand. I gotta have some fun with this car while driving in Beeman G. I can't just do a towing test. These tiny ass tires. We'll just do this, and I want to do a towing test with it too. See what this can tow at the end of the day. A biggest box possible, please. Actually, biggest truck possible. Um, brakes, solid discs in the front, and probably even drums in the rear. I'd say honestly, like, they're trying to save some money here. I want this to be like a twenty-five thousand dollar truck ish, maybe less. Uh, I'm not gonna do under tray because that's too expensive. Uh, that sounds. Oh, that, two bench seats sounds what it would be. A, a basic interior. Nah, it's a work truck. No entertainment. Hydraulic and stand advanced safety. I always do the best safety because that's probably what would happen. There's safety regulations you gotta meet, and this is meeting those. Standard uh, twin tube, and then we're gonna go for a utility kind of. We're gonna go. That looks so cool though, right? It looks so square. <laughs> uh, how do people like these trucks? I don't like them, but they're it's cool as hell. We can't even make the tires any bigger than that. We're gonna lower the thing down a bit, actually. I don't want it that high. Like that seems fine, right? That seems just obscenely big. Okay, that's fine. What's the issue? Severe issues with wheels, but I wouldn't doubt it. I, I don't doubt that at all. Uh, we can just lower the spacing down because we, we, we just want to have that down there a lot. Six miles per gallon. I, that, does that sound normal? I'm not sure. What's this? Just do this to zero. I mean, there's no issues with wheels been there at all. First gear takes us to 100 kilometers an hour. Holy shit, is that gear? Oh my god. It's literally like your first gear is is your drive gear and everything else you got three overdrives. Um first gear to 50, 80, and 116. That sounds fine. You got like an overdrive basically. We're gonna increase this nice and high. You get better fuel economy, even though we're not gonna get better fuel economy out of that. Uh lower this down just a bit. Uh 70 kilometers an hour or 65 kilometers an hour sounds like a fine amount. 110. 
There we go. 65, 110, 170, and 260 kilometers an hour. Yeah, she's she's getting there all right. She's gonna hit that. Wow, look at them breaking. It's awful. Um, oh my god, yeah, we we literally it's gotta go to it's gotta go to solid discs. It has to go to solid discs. And like, I don't want to have race brakes, but it's gonna need race brakes. This thing is 5,300 pounds, which is an actual tank. Uh, I do want to make like a tank build at some point, where like an actual tanky kind of vehicle that I'm trying to build or something, like an actual just off-road focused, thousand horsepower, 2020 kind of tank. That's coming at some point. Who knows if ever? I don't know. Um, what else do we want to do before I design this this massive, actual beast? It, it, it's just it's so slow. It's got it's got no brakes. The brakes literally do nothing. I could go like what? Fed discs won't do anything, right? It's just marginal increases. I can increase the rim size, but yeah, we're already... Oh, I can go three pistons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. That's not terrible. That's... That's bad. But it's, it's not terrible. What's the price, though? 25 gram? 21,000. Look at that. All for $21,000. Now, I'm always... Like, I'm just gonna always assume this is, like, in today's money. Which is, like, you know, what? Six grand back in 1982? Ten grand? I don't know. Ten grand just sounds fine. Uh, you want bigger rear seats and you want front seats because, um, this is a, this is a luxury boy, obviously, obviously. But I think as square as possible is the way to go. Let's move this back a bit. Oh, that's... The proportions are so weird! Oh, what a massive foot! How do you, how do you... This is a driving... Actually, this is what driving a tank looks like, guys. So, the basics of the truck are pretty much complete. Now, what we're going to do is, like always, I'm going to do about a two minute or so time lapse where I designed the truck and there's gonna be some fun facts mixed in. And then after that, we're going to go through it real quick and then take it for a ride in BeamNG Drive. Uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Alright guys, so in front of us we have the all-new Ford 1982 Maven 500 Series XT. Of course, XT standing for Extra Truck. No, I don't know what it stands for. It sounds cool. Sure, why not? We're gonna have it. Let's start from the front here on the design. Uh, now before I do start, I was contemplating um, narrating the actual uh, two minute or so time lapse with all the design stuff on the car. I was wondering if you guys would like to see that in the future, or if not, leave a comment down below. So let's start at the front here. So we have two massive headlights on each side, so quad headlights. Pretty, I would say, original for a full-size truck. I mean, today, if you look at today's full-size trucks, they have, like, pretty massive headlights. Um, well, for 1980s, it looks like they had, like, um, for the most part, the Ford F350 and then the Shipper, or no, then the Ram 2500 HD, or whatever it's called, the 2500, um, not the HD, the 2500. Uh, they, for the most part, they look like they all had just, you know, two big headlights, a little bigger than this probably. 
than a smaller turn signal. I just opted for two massive headlights, two turn signals in a very weird place. No turn signals nowadays would like be that close to the center. And the reason why they are that close to the center is because they have some right here on the side too. So if you can't see these, you can see these sort of flashing. If you're like this, see these, you can see that one, you can see this one, etc. Um, I may add like a third turn signal here. Like there, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna add one, but there could be a third turn signal like on the side here, maybe just for extra sight, sure. So um, at the front here, we have a giant sort of cross hairstyle kind of grill here. I just used one of the grills they had there. Um, don't know 100% if it fits for the 1980s or not. It's, pre it's pretty close to uh, what the uh, Chevrolet Dodge and uh, Ford had. Um, so next to these two massive headlights, we have basically just like bars going down here, which you know gives a car, I'm not a car designer, but I, I feel like it gives a sort of like a, a lateral theme because you already have the headlights going up and down. You have this going up and down, which also sort of goes in with the, um, these would be my five mile per hour bumpers that I just sort of made for the car. I just stuck some little bumperettes on here and they're, they're my five mile an hour bumper, sure. But it all flows in one sort of line here. Uh, you have the Maven's logo right here, which is not actually a logo, it's just an icon, which I used for the Maven logo. It looks fine. I like how it looks. Um, looks kind of almost exotic. Maven is my, um, if you guys don't know, Maven is my made up um, American, I guess, truck or vehicle company. Um, and sure, they made trucks too. Why not? Uh, so continuing on, the only thing left in the front really, so you have a big bumper here, big chrome bumper with a dark brown trim with the, you know, following the paint scheme, which is red and brown, like, I'd say typical 1980s, just weird color choices. I like it, it's cool. Uh, a little bit of a power bulge up here in front, just to give the, you know, the hood a bit more character, so it goes up a little bit, then down a little bit, then up, and so on. I like it, I like it, I think it looks cool again. I, if I like it, if I think it looks cool, it's going to the car. So, uh, last thing for the front is, I actually put wipers in this car, just because i say this build was one of the easier ones because there's not a whole lot to them. The cars are dead simple and it could use a little bit more character than my usual cars and I did that. So the side profile we have um, the cool brown sort of trim line going along the entire side of the car uh, to the back, not all the way to the front, but that's fine. I think it looks kind of cool. I like it. Follows, of course, the other brown trim around the car. A double mirror setup. So yes, yeah, so there's two mirrors on either side. This is a massive truck weighing over 5,000 pounds. Two mirrors is definitely probably a necessity for a truck of this size. You have a tiny little one for your close-up, I'm guessing, and then you have a big one for the far, farther stuff. Sure, why not? I'm not an engineer. I have no idea if that'd be useful or not. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> so anyways, guys, at the top of the truck here, we have a roof rack kind of set up here. It's not perfectly spaced out, but that's okay. Um, just for some extra usefulness of the truck, why not? At the bottom, we have sort of like a door guard or like a, a little a scratch guard, a nick guard. So if someone comes up to you with their car, it would the car door. And I guess this is probably like... Top of their car height's probably like up here or something like that. So we, we don't want half of their car just like bang up against the side of the door or the truck. So you have these little, these guards here. Even though they stick out actually less far than the, than the truck itself. It's it's for looks. Sure, why not? Uh, regular, regular sort of-ish door handles for the 1970s and 80s. And then two fuel tank doors and what this is. So lots of trucks in this era and, and in later the 90s and, and even probably today. Um, they have like a, a standard fuel tank and they have a reserve fuel tank. So they have two fuel tanks. And I decided to have this truck with two fuel tanks as well. Uh, and both doors to the fuel tanks are on the, you know, the, the one side, the driver's side. Is this the driver's side? This, this, is, this is the driver's side? Yeah, sure. Um, rims, pretty standard looking rims. Nothing too fancy about them. Five lug. I wish there was more six lug rims, like big truck rims, but you know, I digress. Um, coming to the back here again, it is a very plain Jane kind of vehicle. I tried to do some things to spruce it up. So the taillights, I think it was a pretty unique taillight design for the 1980s. Um, you have basically this massive actual taillight, which is two taillights actually, it's kind of glitching over, that's okay. Uh, one little reverse light and then a turn signal, that's part of the main taillight, uh, I guess, assembly. And then we have an actual turn signal going around the side here, which is also the side turn signal. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so it's kind of curvy, like the one in the front over here, it's a little bit more rounded, a little too rounded, but that's okay, not perfect. I know, don't judge me. Can't make it perfect in this game. And then a pretty much flat edge on this side with the uh, body lines of the truck here. Because again, the whole theme front and rear is lateral, you know, just up and down, not side to side. We want the truck to look tall AF. Um, so the up and down theme third sort of continues with some more up and down bars here. There is no five mile per hour bumpers or little bumperettes in the back. I might have just missed those. That's okay though. It's fine. Ignore that. Ignore that. Um, so we have a big Maven badge right here. You gotta know what this is. This is a Maven. You know what it is. You see it driving down the road towing 63 cars behind it. It's a gosh darn Maven. Uh, on the right side, we have the 500S badge, so 500 series. Um, it is Maven's, let's just say, heavy-duty AF utility truck line. Why not? And then a um, a latch. It's not actually a latch. It's more of a handle to actually open the um, the tailgate. 
And the reason why that is, in Maven's mind, it was cheaper to instead having a rear release for the 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 um rear hatch. Ah, uh, the words escaping right now. Uh, they have the actual release inside the truck, and then you just come down, and you just pull it open. Sure, why not? Um, that's how it is. It's cheaper. Let's let's just let's just assume it's cheaper. Why not? Uh, so again, we have a similar style bumper to the front, basically um chrome bumper with brown trim around it, basically full in the car. This one has the room for the license plate, and then we have a tow hitch as well. And then uh, lastly, there is um, exhaust tips coming down here. Sort of glitch down halfway. That's okay, they look pretty cool, just like this. And it's a little bit small maybe, but that's it's so hard to play with those right now, but it's fine. Um, then we have a bit of an indent here, and then a couple boxes here just to add again more lateral things. And it's sort of in between this and this. It's not perfect. The truck's not perfect. Deal with it. So what we're going to do now with the truck is take it out in BBG Drive. And this is not going to be a driving video. We're not going to do a racetrack time. Or we're not going to, you know, see how it crashes and stuff. We're going to do some towing. Some good old-fashioned American towing. And then maybe one quick little off-road. It's just the two parts. A bit of off, a bit of off-roading and a bit of towing. I'll see you guys there in just one second. Alright guys, so we are here in BMG Drive with the Maven 500 Series XT. Um, so again, we are going to do a off-roading course first. Uh, I think this thing's gonna be pretty good. I haven't tested it at all. This is literally the first time. If it doesn't work, then you'll be the first to know. Uh, we're gonna be in realistic mode for this. It's actually surprisingly pretty loud. 4500 RPM. Kind of high revving too. Uh, initial looks. I love the front end. I think the front end looks pretty awesome. The side looks tough, tough as nails. Uh, and the rear. Uh, I like it. I don't know if I like this though. I don't know. Besides, it looks great. Let's just start off here. We're gonna go into first gear. We're gonna keep it in um, just high range, no lock and dips. We're gonna try, gonna try to climb through this and see if we can make it out. Nice and easy first. There's one more off road track we're gonna do too. It's a crawling track, which we'll just drive right to after. Um, this thing, I am worried about it just being so massive though, that it might not fit through everything. Because it is an absolute behemoth. Uh, and the reason why I named it the 500 series, guys, if you guys are wondering, is because its payload capacity is 5,000 over 5,000 pounds. It didn't give me a towing rating, which is kind of surprising. Usually it should give you a towing right now. I don't know. Maybe I didn't do right. Who knows? Okay. So beat that with ease. I thought it would be pretty easy. Um, we're going to drive just over here to the off-road course. We are here at this underground sort of cavern thing. Of course, in the same map. We are in the grid map. Uh, we're going to take this thing a bit off-roading. We're going to keep it in uh, first person only. And we're going to keep it, of course, in high... We're going to put a low range, obviously, at some point. But uh, let's put the lights on here. These are, the, these are the brights, actually. This is pretty dull still. We're going to suck on things. We're going to need a little more power here. Wow, I didn't even actually have to grab it that much. Okay, well, we're getting stuck here. And clearly this, this first person extravagance is not going well. We're gonna go in reverse here. There we go, just gonna floor it. I don't know what's broken, I'm gonna assume everything's fine. This thing is just too massive to maneuver in this thing. This is meant for a small vehicle, not a massive truck that weighs five, over 5,000 pounds, which is pretty average actually, I'd say. Not even that heavy, it's, it's heavy obviously, but... Oh, like, oh gosh, this is this is gonna be scary. Put it first. Oh, we're on the bridge. Oh, we're hitting something. We're definitely too far to the left. Wow, did that nicely. A lot of torque, though. Surprisingly, a lot of torque. I wonder if this thing could tow next. We're gonna do that next. We're just up here. It's fine, it's fine. We're just gonna go straight up this hill, I guess. This looks like we can do this, probably. Holy crap, it made it up the hill. Holy cow, let's see. The truck? <laughs> it's missing the bumpers. That's fine. So, the Maven Series 500 is hooked up to this. Uh, it's, it's a rocket ship now. It's, it's a rocket bus. Um, ignore the rocket. Uh, this is the heaviest bus configuration that I did from the default ones. Weighs uh, 1,250... 12,000, not 1,200. 12,500 kilograms for the Americans in here around 28,000 pounds so it is a relatively heavy bus uh, I don't know what buses weigh usually but this this seems like it's pretty heavy uh, anyway so we are in low range we are gonna lock the front rear diffs I have the bus if we toggle to it toggle to it uh, it is in first gear by manually the um, parking brakes off engines off so there's no engine assist on that I wish I tell us we're gonna see if this thing could tow here we can see how fast okay wow it's actually pretty easy we're towing 30,000 pounds pretty easy the back end is Oh, the back end does it squat. Oh, it squats a lot when it, when it gets the throttle. Okay, let's put it in the fourth. We're gonna run first gear now. 
Just launch it first gear. Should we get some speed here? Come on, come on. Oh yeah, it's not making it for sure. That's okay. So this truck, it, it can tow it. It can tow 30,000 ish pounds. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's probably not going to be the official towing weight because this thing looks like it's about to completely break down. It's definitely not good for the engine. But it tows it pretty well. The stopping on the other hand is yeah, literally impossible. Um, now we can just check the durability here. We'll just see if they can hold it against the wall here. There we go. Perfect. Oh, just, just turn that off. There we go. Okay, so that was a, a rear end crash at what, 80 kilometers an hour? Definitely gonna fail the crash test, guys. Um, it's still, it's still drive if it drives, it gets an automatic pass. Yeah, it's still drive. Okay, automatic pass. Automatic pass. I like this version better, actually. It's so much more nimble. <laughs> oh my god, look at it. Perfectly fine. That metal scraping there. What, what metal scraping? There, what, what metal scraping, guys? Okay, the occasional scrape, I'll give it that. So the car, I'd say it's a success. Actually, one of them, I keep saying this, but it's one of the more fun builds. I'd say, honestly, each time I do a video, I have more and more fun doing it. And I think this is honestly a lot of fun. I know it's a bit different. We're towing, we're not really driving in this one. That's fine. This is not a driver's car. Uh, one thing I'm going to point out that before we sign off is the taillights are kind of glitched out. Don't blame me. Blame, blame the game. Actually, don't blame the game because developers are working hard to make us a great game. We should be thanking them for making this even possible. Um, so that's all for the Maven series or 500 series uh, XT. Um, there's gonna be a challenge video coming soon. Um, there's been a bit of delays. It's it's not anyone's fault. It just you know it's, it's hard to coordinate these things and stuff. It, this is me and Canadian Steel's last or challenge together. And then after that, we're gonna be starting with subscriber challenges where you guys can submit your cars to me, and we'll see if they can keep up to what me and Canadian Steel make or or whatever. Um, I might be I might be reaching out to other people, seeing if other people want to do some stuff too. Uh, not not because I want to get rid of Canadian Steel, but it's because you know more people, more fun, obviously. So if I can do something with Bashar uh, Nasri, he's awesome. I've I've actually watched his videos. I watched his very first video when it came out of Automation Beam and G. Um, I don't watch him you know as much anymore because I just don't have the time. Um, but he is awesome. Um, and you know I I like to do a uh, a collab with Kill Rob, which is the lead dev of Automation, because I did a video with him. I like to do collab with him. I don't think my channel's big enough yet, but we're getting there, guys. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys commenting, liking, subscribing. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.